Chapter 5 A hand on his shoulder woke Dink from a sound sleep. The light next to the bed was on. The black stallion lay on the cover, still opened. Through sleepy eyes, he looked into his uncle's face. Morning, Donnie, Uncle Warren said quietly. Time to get up. Hi, Uncle Warren, Dink said. You boys have to hop to it, Uncle Warren said. Forrest wants to get on the road before, right after breakfast. He smiled at Dink and left the room. Dink tossed his pillow over at Josh's bed, then walked into the bathroom. Josh grumbled, but soon they were both dressed and headed for the, the kitchen. Forrest and Ruth Rose were sitting at the table eating oats, oatmeal. <laughs> Uncle Warren took a pot off the stove and filled bowls with Dink and Josh. Everyone sleep all right? Forrest asked. I did, Ruth Rose said. She spooned some brown sugar over her cereal. Today her color was purple. Purple leggings, purple blouse, purple headband, purple sneakers. Me too, Dink said, except for Josh's snoring all night. They ate quickly, then left the house and piled into Forrest's car. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose sat in the back seat. They each had their books, and Josh had brought his pillow. Forrest turned out of his driveway and drove through Largmont. After making a few turns, he was on a wide highway. Dink saw a sign that said Albany, 120 miles. A few hours later, they arrived in Saratoga Springs. Forrest pulled his car into a parking lot. They all climbed out of the car and stretched their legs. Under tall trees, Dink saw long green barns. Near the barns, men and women were grooming horses, feeding horses, exercising horses. There were horses everywhere. Ruth Rose took pictures of horses and one of a barn with the sun shining on the green wood. Let's go find Sunny, Forrest suggested. She'll be in a barn E. She'll be in barn E, stall number 21. They cut through some trees, following a wide path. Barns stood on both sides of the path. Each barn had a large letter painted on one side. The gravel walkway was crowded with people. Some were walking horses, others were just looking. There's Barn E, Josh said, sprinting ahead. Forrest, Uncle Warren, and the kids found Sunny outside stall 21. She had one foot on a bale of hay and was buffing her riding boot with a cloth. A can of black boot polish sat on the floor. Hi, Sunny, Forrest said. Sunny wore white riding pants. Her silk racing shirt was green with yellow stripes on the arms. Circling her left arm was a cloth band with the number 21 stitched on it. Her hair was tucked up under a hard hat covered in yellow silk. Oval-shaped goggles rested on the hat's visor. Sunny dropped the cloth and smiled. Hi, everyone, she said. Any problems, Forrest asked. He didn't want to walk into the trailer this morning, Sunny said, and he definitely didn't like me getting him ready once we got here. Good morning, Whirl Away, Forrest said to his horse. Why are you giving Sunny a hard time? Hey, boy. Everyone peered into the stall. Whirl Away was standing in a corner with his eyes on the newcomers. He looks terrific, Sunny, Forrest said. Nice job. Sunny had brushed Whirl Away's coat till it gleamed. The white tape she'd wrapped around his ankles looked snowy against his nearly black coat. Why do you wear goggles? Ruth Rose asked Sunny. To protect my eyes, Sunny said. During races, the horses in front of me kick up dirt. You should see me when I race in the rain, totally covered in mud. What time is the race? Tink asked. We're in the second one, Sunny said. Two o'clock. We'll be cheering you on, Uncle Warren said. Can I take a picture of you and whirl away? Ruth Rose asked. Sure, Sunny said. She walked into the stall and put her hand on Whirlaway's halter. Whirlaway rolled his eyes at her and threw his head back. Ruth Rose is right, thought Dink. Whirlaway doesn't like Sunny at all. Ruth Rose snapped a picture. <laughs>